David Sinclair is one of the most known people in the longevity space. Now, of course, David Sinclair promotes a generally healthy lifestyle that includes exercise, a good diet and sleep, but he also takes a few supplements for the sake of longevity and anti-aging. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his supplement stack. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it. We have an article by Novos Labs that is also involved in like the anti-aging space of the list of supplements David Sinclair takes and it's actually pretty new newly updated February 28 2023 so here's the list actually you can see that there's only 12 supplements which is interesting and quite a big contrast to someone like Brian Johnson who takes over 100 supplements per day first uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN one gram per day in the morning so this is an uh, this NAD booster resveratrol one gram per day in the morning metformin 800 milligrams in the evening so I guess that's also per day vitamin d3 I ideally 4,000 to 5,000 IUs per day. Vitamin K2, ideally 180 to 360 micrograms per day. A statin, not specified which one. Seven, low-dose aspirin, 83 milligrams per day. Alpha lipoic acid, ALA, recent status unknown. Coenzyme Q10, recent status unknown. Spermidine, one milligram per day in the morning. Quercetin and physetin, 500 milligrams each once per day in the morning. And lastly, trimethylglycine or betaine, 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams per day. My first impression is that, I mean, that's a pretty good stack. Of course, David Sinclair is the diehard uh, resveratrol fan i'm personally not uh, really that enthusiastic about resveratrol or, or there haven't been enough evidence in humans to suggest that it actually has any longevity benefits and the evidence in animal studies is also quite conflicting and uh, not that impressive but the other supplements that he's taking and the pharmaceuticals generally i would agree that they have like some positive benefits at least in terms of longevity and aging uh, specifically for his goals probably like he has maybe specific goals for his health and longevity and i do think that uh, those uh, would uh, like support uh, those goals for him but Novos Labs has also uh, given out some of the like science and studies of these uh, supplements and uh, their own comments about these so NMN it's uh, one of the most popular NAD booster supplements uh, compared or contrast to uh, nicotinamide riboside NR now personally I think that both of them work there's a lot of discussion whether or not NMN actually works or not, but there are human studies uh, showing that NMN does raise NAD levels in humans. And, you know, how big of a difference does NAD boosting or raising NAD levels actually has in terms of lifespan and longevity, we don't know yet, but we do know that it does elevate NAD levels. So that's, you know, that's the only thing that matters in this context in terms of uh, whether or not you believe an NAD is a different story, but it does elevate your NAD levels and both of them uh, work. So 1000 milligrams of NMN is a pretty large dose and even uh, 250 milligrams per day has been found to uh, result in elevated NAD levels in humans. So I personally think, yeah, like uh, 1000 milligrams is uh, quite a lot. You probably don't need that much, but depends on your age as well. Like if you are someone in their 50s, like David Sinclair, then yeah, it does make sense uh, to maybe take like a larger dose of 1000 milligrams. Someone like me who is in my 20s, yeah, I don't take NMN every day. I do take it on, uh, let's say, some days that I do miss out on some sleep or I have just like circadian mismatch or something like that then I do take like 500 to 1000 milligrams but uh, yeah it depends on your age and depends on your baseline NAD levels whether or not you do need it because raising NAD levels itself like it, it's, it's not like a linear fashion like the more NAD you boost the healthier you're gonna get it doesn't really work like that and uh, generally I would suggest that, that uh, the minimal effective dose at like a daily basis to take is probably uh, better. Next up, resveratrol, one gram per day. So this is the very, let's say, uh, controversial supplement. And uh, I personally don't believe in uh, resveratrol that much. I think that the evidence isn't uh, convincing enough. And uh, there are also potential side effects, especially in terms of VO2 max and even testosterone levels in males. Now, there are studies in humans that resveratrol does improve cholesterol and uh, lipid profile and just metabolic health, but uh, those individuals already have some aspects of you know, poor metabolic health. I don't think that it's resveratrol is going to have any significant effect if you're already healthy. And uh, the activation of sirtuins and the longevity pathways you get from that is very you know, murky in terms of that. There is no consensus yet about it. And uh, even like a lot of the evidence suggests that, yeah, it doesn't really work in terms of lifespan. But it might help with things like, yeah, metabolic profile and uh, your lipid profile and those kind of things if you have issues with that. Next up, we have metformin, the prescription diabetic drug. 
as far as I'm aware, David Sinclair doesn't have diabetes. So yeah, he's taking it uh, for the sake of longevity. There are like, yeah, some human studies showing that metformin may have benefits for anti-aging and longevity, but, but those studies can be a bit misleading. And if you actually control for that, or if you try to replicate those results, then yeah, it doesn't really have any extraordinary benefits uh, for non-diabetic people. If you do have diabetes, then yes, it can be very beneficial and very powerful. And I think maybe like every once in a while to take metformin for the sake of lowering your blood sugar. So like cycling between periods of lower blood sugar and this more ketotic state with the periods of higher carb intake, etc. is probably the best in terms of longevity for non-diabetic people. If you have diabetes, then obviously you need to take it pretty regularly. But if you don't have diabetes, then it doesn't make sense to take metformin continuously, in my opinion, because yeah, it might have some negative side effects for the other aspects of health and longevity, which is, you know, muscle anabolism and just overall metabolic health. It's a trap. Next up, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. So that is a good combo, in my opinion. Generally, most people, especially if you're not living in a very sunny environment, you know, you, if you live somewhere like in the north hemisphere then you generally would need like some uh, vitamin d at least some parts of the year now a dose of 4000 to 5000 i use per day is very kind of uh, moderate and it's good like a maintenance dose and there are studies showing that vitamin d supplementation is associated with reduced mortality and you still want to get natural sunlight exposure even if you are taking a d3 supplement because you get a lot of the other health benefits from sunlight as well that you don't get from the uh, supplement itself now, K2 is uh, beneficial for the bone health, but also preventing atherosclerosis. So taking uh, K2 with the D3 is a good combo because you're going to prevent the calcium buildup that may occur if you do just take uh, vitamin D3 alone. So statin prescription drug as well for uh, high cholesterol levels and uh, heart disease prevention. Again, I don't think that David Sinclair has atherosclerosis or he doesn't have uh, like heart disease or anything like that, but he does take the statin as a preventive uh, drug to help to keep the cholesterol levels as low as possible, I would resume now again there is a lot of controversy whether or not it is you know bennett or needed to keep your cholesterol levels that low all the time and i i'm not gonna like really comment on that i think that you know if you have already existing atherosclerosis and you're at a high risk of heart disease then in that scenario again the statin would probably save your life in a lot of ways uh, but if you're healthy you don't have high cholesterol necessarily and you don't have heart disease or anything like that i wouldn't say that uh, in that case the statin would be needed but again like uh, david sinclair he's it's his decision and uh, that's what he uh, chooses to do next up we have a low dose aspirin so this baby aspirin 83 milligrams per day now the uh, effect or the mechanism of uh, benefits of aspirin has to do with the anti-inflammatory benefits i do think that yeah in uh periodic use or in certain situations the aspirin is quite beneficial especially yeah if you're under sleep deprivation or whatever other higher inflammatory state then uh, the low dose aspirin is quite beneficial i do take it as well every once in a while especially if again i have like missed some uh, sleep or something like that i'll take that but uh, continuous chronic use of uh, aspirin might increase the risk of gas gastrointestinal bleeding so uh, you have to be kind of careful with that as well so if you don't really suffer from any like inflammatory state then i would keep the uh, either the dose of the aspirin very small or you would just use it only on the situations where you know you actually have some inflammation that you need to deal with alpha lipoic acid so this one the main let's say benefit for that is gonna be for glutathione boosting so antioxidant defense interesting enough he doesn't take glycine or NAC which I would argue is actually even more potent of a stimulator for glutathione and the antioxidant benefits I'm pretty sure there's more studies human clinical studies showing the benefits of glycine and NAC than alpha lipoic acid big mistake coenzyme q10 so a mitochondrial supportive supplement maybe inc increasing energy production and those kind of things but uh, I'm pretty sure there isn't like actual lifespan or longevity evidence about it spermidine one milligram per day in the morning so spermidine is another one of the popular longevity supplements right now that uh, is on the scene. And uh, there is some studies showing that dietary spermidine intake is associated with reduced mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease mortality as well. But uh, the key word is dietary spermidine. So there is no uh, studies about supplemental spermidine having those benefits. And I personally think that, yeah, you probably want to get it from the dietary spermidine sources, which includes like uh, cheeses, uh, mushrooms, vegetables, even meat and uh, some other, just, just generally like healthy foods have spermidine, but the highest source of spermidine are like wheat germ, mushrooms, 
and uh, GSAS. And in those studies, actually, you want to get 11 milligrams of spermidine. That is where you see the reduction in mortality and that it's up to like 30% uh, lower compared to less than 9.6 milligrams per day. So David Sinclair, it's interesting that he takes only like, first of all, the supplement spermidine and only one milligrams per day. So like the one milligram isn't going to do like a lot. Uh, you want to get at least 11 milligrams, even if you do believe that uh, the supplemental spermidine would contribute to that reduced mortality. Senolytics, quercetin and fisetin, five milligrams each once per day in the morning. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the senolytics are, I think, a valid strategy because the senescent cells are one of the hallmarks of aging. And uh, there are only like a few compounds that actually do, do like help to clear out those senescent cells should you take the senescent uh, or senolytics every day maybe maybe it depends on your you know health status depends on your age etc uh, so generally if you're unhealthy you're going to accumulate more senescent cells and uh, the more like senolytics you would need i don't think david sinclair is necessarily unhealthy he's definitely you know much healthier than the average person so i'm not sure if, if um, a senolytic every day would make sense because senolytics can also you know, impair some aspects of wound healing and uh, you just may cause like more uh, collateral damage as well in terms of, you know, the um, wiping out the senescent cells. And the last supplement on the list is uh, trimethylglycine or TMG. So uh, this is another methyl donor, let's say it's going to be good for methylation. And if you look at some of the studies on actual reduction in DNA methylation age in humans, then the dietary sources of trimethylglycine like betaine and liver and dark leafy greens have been like an important part of that so it does make sense to take trimethylglycine as a supplement as well because he's taking nmn so if you take nmn alone then you do lose out on some of the like the methyl donors you like excrete some of the methyl donors so you need to take tmg preferably or some other methyl donor supplement uh, with nmn and uh, the tmg also has like some other health benefits has helped to lower homocysteine levels and it might have some benefits for athletic performance as well. So overall, I would say that it's a pretty well-balanced stack. Of course, there are some things that uh, I'm not taking from that stack and there are some things that I'm a bit skeptical about. But overall, first of all, it's not that many supplements. It's only like 12 supplements that he's taking. I don't know what else he's taking. He probably takes some other supplements. He might take a collagen supplement. Uh, he might take NSE, I don't know, but uh, this is the list that we have, at least uh, based on this article. If you want to learn about my own personal supplement stack, then you can get a free PDF by clicking the link in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.